Mary Peck Lee's family went to Hawaii for work in 1905, part of the original Korean immigrants numbering around 7,000, and a year later moved to the Pacific coast. A five-year-old when Lee left Korea, she wanted to live 90 more years in America. And she faced racism throughout her life. Once, in 1918, as Lee was about to enter a church for Sunday service, the Caucasian pastor told her, quote, I don't want dirty Japs in my church. Go to hell, end of a quote. Wow, oh, how terrible. But despite all that she and her family had to endure, she said disappointed seeing how well her own children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews were doing in America. She said, quote, The third generation of Asians are fortunate to be born into a different world where everything is possible if they work hard enough. End of a quote. But to the authors of these books, White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, Stam from the Beginning by Ibram X. Candy, White Privilege and Male Privilege in Race, Class, and Gender by Peggy McIntosh, Mary Peck Stamen is playing into the racist ideology because her belief that everything is possible if they, racial and ethnic minorities, work hard enough, implies that our system of meritocracy, which D'Angelo defines as the belief that anyone can succeed if he or she works hard enough, is fair and does not discriminate against racial and ethnic minorities. McIntosh writes, quote, I must give up the myth of meritocracy. This is not such a free country. One's life is not what one makes it. Many doors open for certain people through no virtues of their own. All sorts of doors open automatically because of my color. End of a quote. McIntosh, of course, is a white female. Is this true? Who is right? Mary Pack or D'Angelo, Candy, and Macintosh? For believers whose life's constitution is God's word, the real question is, what does the scripture say on this matter? This is why this series is called Hooray for Social Justice, but whose justice? What does that mean? Well, you can tune in to the first message and find out. After that, in the second message, we will deal with what God's Word says about working hard and whether it is part of racist ideology in America. In the third message, I'm going to address abortion as a matter of justice for the people involved in that act of finality. Did that statement go down okay for you? I said, people. The fourth message is where I get personal and speak to those who really want to make a difference by way of making our society more just. No doubt a worthy and biblically warranted effort. Okay, I hope you stay tuned for all these short messages. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> 